Number 9. Lauren K. Scott In June of 2017, an adult film actress was arrested for hitting a man with whom she was involved in an intimate relationship. 23-year-old Lauren K. Scott, professionally known as Dakota Sky, was at the home of boyfriend Robert Anderson in Pinellas Park, Florida. They'd reportedly been seeing each other for roughly six months, even though Las Vegas marriage records indicated that, at the time, Scott was married to agent Zachary Lecomte Goebel. After she and Anderson had had intercourse, the former became angry that Scott wasn't paying attention to him and wouldn't get off her phone. An argument ensued that culminated with the adult actress striking him in the face with an open right hand, split and open his bottom lip. He called the authorities and Scott was arrested, listing the adult industry as her employer in the resulting affidavit. She was charged with misdemeanor domestic battery and released on her own recognizance, but the charges were ultimately dropped. It's unclear if drugs or alcohol had been involved in the incident, but Scott was known to have struggled with severe addiction. A few years after the battery incident, on June the 8th of 2021, she called friends to say that she was going to become a Hell's Angel biker because the police and the mafia were after her. She reportedly asked them for a place to stay on the night, but everyone refused her. The woman who'd appeared in over 300 films and had once been among the top searches on adult websites was found dead the following day in a stranger's RV on Los Angeles's Skid Row. The cause of her passing remained undetermined as of the latest updates on the matter. Number 8. New Jersey Woman An unnamed New Jersey woman took a hard fall in June of 2017 as she was walking on the street in Plainfield and got distracted by her cell phone. The 67-year-old woman approached basement doors which had been left open for gas line repairs. The woman kept looking at her phone and didn't turn to avoid them. She flipped over a door and plunged headfirst roughly six feet into the basement. The woman whose son claimed suffered from poor eyesight was pulled out on a stretcher by fire crews. She was reported to have sustained serious injuries in the fall but was subsequently pronounced as being in a stable condition. Number 7. Charlotte Buesden An inquest into the traffic collision death of an English woman proposed in early 22 that she'd lost control of her vehicle while watching an episode of a reality TV show on her cell phone. On August the 23rd of the previous year, Charlotte Buesden was traveling on a busy road in Kemsley, Kent, in her Nissan Qashqai. At around 7.30 a.m., shortly after dropping her son off at school, Buesden veered into oncoming traffic, a lorry driver, which the inquest concluded had had no chance of avoiding the 28-year-old's Nissan, crashed into her. Buesden succumbed to a severe skull fracture in the aftermath. Her phone was found attached to a magnetic clip on the dashboard and displaying an error message which indicated that the device had become disconnected from an episode of Love Island. Dashcam footage from the lorry was of poor quality, according to the authorities, but it did appear to show that Buesden had been looking in the direction of her phone and then moving her arm towards where it had been mounted. It was thus suspected that she hadn't been paying attention while driving because she'd been watching the show. Number 6. Sarah Fullard on June the 3rd of 2021, Englishwoman Sarah Fullard had finished assembling a flat pack coffee table in the garden of her home in Hull, East Yorkshire. A neighbor later recounted seeing Fullard at work and how she appeared to be excited she had managed to put it up herself. The 42-year-old reportedly decided to celebrate the completed project by pouring herself a few drinks. When the unnamed neighbor looked over the fence once more, he saw her slumped over the coffee table and immediately called the emergency services. Fullard was subsequently pronounced dead and a post-mortem found the cause to have been positional asphyxia. It was determined that at some point the woman had tripped over the same coffee table she'd previously assembled. She was knocked unconscious in the fall and ended up in a position that rendered her unable to breathe. The examination found that Fullard had moderate to severe alcohol intoxication, but although it was regarded as increasing the risk of a fall, alcohol wasn't listed as the primary factor in the accident. Additionally, Fullard's liver was reported as being in healthy condition, suggesting she'd never been a heavy drinker. Number 5. Tejas Patel 24-year-old Tejas Patel died in January of 2015 
after accidentally stepping in front of a train at the Morningside station in Auckland, New Zealand. Patel had gotten off a passenger train while reportedly looking into his cell phone and as another train was approaching from the opposite direction. It was below the maximum line speed at the time while barriers and warnings were reportedly working accurately. Seemingly unaware of his surroundings, Patel walked from the platform through an unguarded opening and in doing so, ended up directly in the path of the oncoming train. He was struck and killed instantly. In the tragedy's aftermath, Patel's mother asked for enhanced safety measures at the country's rail crossings, while Auckland's Indian community raised $10,000 for Patel's father to accompany his body back to India. A report from the Transport Accident Investigation Commission found that the rail operators and providers had to take cell phone use into their risk assessment when designing or implementing rail safety. Number 4. Craig Harding 60-year-old Englishwoman Marilyn McKnight was left with life-changing injuries following a devastating car accident that took place on Mother's Day 2015. She had been travelling in a Ford car with her son and daughter-in-law to visit her elderly mother. Craig Harding, age 44, was behind the wheel of a Volkswagen Polo and not paying attention to the road in front because he was looking at an accident on the other side of the A19 near Hutton Henry, County Durham. In doing so, Harding failed to notice that the cars in front had slowed down and slammed into the back of the Ford at considerable speed, nearly toppling it on its roof. Much like Harding, McKnight's family wasn't reported as being in life-threatening condition, but the woman received extensive treatment at the scene prior to being airlifted to a hospital. McKnight became permanently blind in one eye and sustained severe spinal injuries that rendered her unable to walk and only have minimal movement in her arms. Police subsequently released a video of the harrowing crash in an effort to raise awareness to the dangers of being distracted at the wheel. Harding, who admitted he'd been momentarily distracted, was charged with causing serious injury by dangerous driving and sentenced to 10 months in prison. Number 3. Elena Gladkika On a Sunday morning in September of 2016, married beauty consultant Elena Gladkika and her lover were having drinks while watching the sunrise on the roof of her midtown Manhattan apartment building. The pair got locked out at some point, and after exhausting all avenues for regaining access, 27-year-old Gladkika called her husband to let her back inside. As she waited and as her date was hiding on the roof, Gladkika reportedly dangled her legs over a ledge. The woman, who was reported as inebriated at the time, then lost her footing and fell from the five-story building at 449 West 37th Street. The New York Post reported that when Gladkika's husband eventually made his way to the roof, he was told that she'd fallen by the other man. Gladkika's body became trapped between two buildings and the fire department had to borrow a ladder from a porter to reach her. Gladkika, who'd only been wearing a brassiere and underwear when rescuers found her, was subsequently pronounced dead at Bellevue Hospital. In the immediate aftermath, the woman's distraught husband told a media outlet that he was scrambling to get in touch with his late spouse's relatives in her native Russia. Number 2. Uroko Onoja An argument within a polygamous marriage ended in the death of a Nigerian man in the summer of 2012. In the early hours of the morning, Uroko Onoja returned to his home in Ogbugbo, Ogbadibo, after spending some time at a local bar. He headed to the bedroom with only the youngest of his six wives and they became intimate. The other women flew into a fit of collective rage because they weren't receiving the same type of attention. They reportedly burst into the bedroom and set upon Onoja with knives and sticks, demanding he have intercourse with each of them as well. According to Nigeria's Daily Post, the man had attempted to resist the demands of his wives but was ultimately overpowered. He was forced to perform as ordered with four of the women in succession. However, as the fifth was making her way to bed, Onoja stopped breathing. The businessman, described as a philanthropist and a positive contributor to his community, couldn't be resuscitated. His youngest wife subsequently told the authorities that the others had fled into the forest upon realizing their husband was unresponsive. Local media would later report that he'd been abused to death and at least two of his wives were arrested. Number 1 accident in Oklahoma. Six Oklahoma teenagers were killed in a car crash on March the 22nd of 2022, after the vehicle in which they'd been traveling was struck by a semi-truck at a notoriously dangerous intersection near Tishomingo, 
Madison Robertson was driving while accompanied by five friends in a 2015 Chevrolet Spark, a small car only meant to seat four. The passengers were identified as Gracie Mercado, Brooklyn Triplett, Austin Holt, Addison Gratz, and Memory Wilson. Robertson approached the stop sign at an intersection locally known as the Y, found at a 90-degree curve of US 377 from east to south. The junction had long been criticized by residents for how easy it was for drivers to pull into oncoming traffic, but their pleas for changes had largely gone unanswered. In spite of the well-known dangers, reports suggested that Robertson hadn't paid adequate attention to the oncoming truck. While also reportedly rolling through the stop sign, 51-year-old Bernieville man Valendon Burton was driving the semi, which was hauling rocks at the time. He plowed into the Chevrolet and the devastating impact mangled the smaller car ripping its doors off and throwing it roughly 300 feet from the intersection. Four of the teens, including Robertson, died at the scene while the remaining two passed away at a local hospital. A review by the National Transportation Safety Board found that Robertson had cannabis in her system and that she'd also violated the law by driving on an intermediate license while not having a fully qualified driver aged 21 or older supervising her. Burton, who didn't suffer any serious injuries in the crash, hadn't been charged in connection to it as of early May 2022. Thanks for watching. Would you rather cross a busy intersection blindfolded or miss your turn when being called at the DMV? Let us know in the comments section below.